guess everyone cool with me recording this for YouTube? Yeah, yeah, for yeah. sure. Excellent. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, hello and welcome to another video. Again, these are the Zoom conversations that I have with my friends and followers, I guess, into similar magic things that I do and sometimes things that I don't do, like comedy. I, I was terrible. I let Paul Reagan run the comedy channel. But uh, today I'm talking about one of the topics that I'm so passionate about, which is coin magic. Right. So today I have two people with me. I've got Luis and Mile. Uh, so I'll let them introduce themselves to you. So let's, let's start with Luis first. Go ahead. Tell us something short about yourself. Me? Well, a little bit short. I'm short. Uh, <laughs> well, I've been studying coin magic for like more about 15 years. It was my first love. Because uh, I saw Jeff Buck Bright doing a, a Mice's yeah. Dream. And then... Yeah. My first DVD, I, I didn't know what to start, so I bought Curtis Cam Palms of Steel 2. Okay, okay. The easiest that's DVD that's in the planet. And then, uh, <laughs> yeah, and right. It was fun. And then I never, that, that, yeah. that's my, that was my whole start of magic. It was funny because okay. like, people were like, yeah, Luis, I sh they showed me like a, a just a simple French, French drop. And I'm like, yeah, wow. And then I was doing yeah. edge grip work, and they're like, you don't know what a French drop is doing edge grip? <laughs> That's what I learned. <laughs> yeah, I think I think I'm the same. I started off with such technical stuff, and then I didn't learn the easy stuff. Like as in, in rope magic, I I've not learned all of that stuff. Okay, so let's let's go on to uh, Mel. Yeah. So something short <laughs> introductions. So yeah. I'm from Finland. I've uh, been doing magic around 50 years, more or less, and I've uh, been really passionate about coin magic. I think like 10 years. Wow. I I just, I just love it. Uh, I just got my first release published oh, nice. uh, out there by uh, Penguin Magic. It's called okay. Utility Volume okay. One. Okay. So and that's so yeah. So what we'll do is we'll put your links down, both of your links down in the video description below. So if you want to check them out, anyone's watching who doesn't know them, go and check their Instagram. I'll put the Instagram links, then they can get in touch with you, and then you can share it, 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 well whatever your performer where you can buy stuff, I guess. Um, okay, so one of the questions people ask me is why did you choose coin magic? Now, obviously I do a lot of magic and I'm sure we all do a lot of magic, um, but I think my favorite is coin because of the simplicity with it. I think it's, it's, it, it utilizes things like a vanish and a, and, a, and a production where you can have transpositions and you can have all of this. So in fact, I think anyone can jump in and just talk about the simplicity of why you use coin magic as your favorite, I guess. And, and, and sound. And that's sound. One, that's, See, that's, that's one thing. Important thing. Yes. I think that's the only brand of magic that you can hear and instantly recognize what yeah. it is because if, if it, like a lot of, I, I hear a lot of guys going, oh, I, coin magic's not good for a stage. Yes, but if you drop a card on your hand, you don't hear mm -hmm. anything. But if you drop, they know, yeah. they, they, you know what a coin sounds since you're a kid. Yeah, yeah. So that's instantly recognizable to anybody, right? Mm -hmm. So he has the, and I, I always think, like I had this conversation with Kainua a bunch of times, that most people should start with coin magic. Okay. Because it's, they're, it's not the only, but probably the brand of magic that requires you to learn about yourself more than the others. As I can card yeah. magic, you're just holding your deck yeah. and this hand is doing the work. I mean, coin magic, because you know, like you have to do this hand, this hand has to move, this hand, you have to learn how to mirror and learn yeah. about body yeah. movement. So you figure it out your own space and everything else. So it's, that's why I love it. It's just it's just like being stage manipulation, but in close up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, what about you, Mel? Same, similar well, sort of. For me, uh, when I started uh, magic, I was in the uh, gambling stuff. Okay. More, and then I found uh, Kaino Harbor's book Coins on Edge, and I started to read it and really enjoyed it, and I I found out when I was online reading something about this book and and from coin magic and every every now and then someone said that coin magic is really hard and i was just surprised because i i never found it hard and i i don't know what was the reason why it just felt good to do it and it's just it's 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 just the 
the fun thing about this is just doing it. It's just so much fun. Yeah, yeah. And I, with yeah, and I guess just to go back with Louis, what Louis said uh, is sound. Uh, there's a lot of things where, you know, like people always think about how can I perform magic? It's not like people want to do that, but just how can I perform magic when people can't see anything? Uh, let's say if you're if you're bl uh, not blind, but I'm just saying, let's say you're in a dark room or whatever, you can still feel and, and hear the sounds of the coin. So I guess that okay. could be magic in a way where you, I yeah. don't know if you could do that with cards uh, as much as, as you could do with coins because you can feel them no. in your hands and shake them. And that's, that's, uh, that, that's a very interesting element of the sound that comes into it. Mm. Um, yeah. It's, a, and, it's uh, a beautiful, like when you, we, I don't know if you've ever seen the, uh, David Ross doing the, um, the uh, tuning fork routine. Yeah. No, uh, I haven't when, seen that. Okay, so he pick, he takes a tuning fork and uh, he shakes oh, the coin on, have, inside yes. of a glass. Yes. Like when I, when I saw that, to me, when I, I, I went to his lecture and he did that trick, and I always I always loved it, but I didn't know why. Mm. It never yeah. caught why I like it. And then yeah, when yeah. I, I went to his lecture, I went like, he had three lectures, and I went to yeah. all the three days, which was amazing. Okay. And nice. when I was talking to him, and I was like, I, I, I super like that trick. I just don't know why. And then he's like, this is why. Yeah. It's the sound nice. of it. So every time you hear the sound of the coins in the glass, and then you shake in your hand, and you show that it's nothing, you mm. remember that sound. So when yeah. I do the tuning fork, and you go, Whoo, it's the sound. He's like, I'm, I bet you'll enjoy music. I'm, yeah, like, yeah. I'm like, yeah, I'm a drummer. He's like, and that's why you like coin magic. Right. it's the sound of it pulls you in i'm like hmm. and it, mm. you know it's like when you, you see a miser's dream you pull, the guy pulls the coin and drop it on a bucket you hear that clink mm. Mm. you don't see yeah. you don't see that coin yeah but yeah. your head automatically see it sees that coin dropping into the bucket which is a yeah. beautiful illusion right yeah and even if it's not the sound let's say if it's not the sound it's just the fact that it's visual and you can use your body yes. language like you said earlier that means you don't need to speak there's a lot of coin magic so obviously there are card card routines that can be done to music but like my mm -hmm. pen and coin routine i do it to music and i do it live on because i work with Diego Meister at the moment and i do their shows every now and again and that's a very important part of my show is my coin and pen routine where i don't speak to the audience they watch me on zoom obviously and i just play my music and I just do it to music. Uh, there's, yeah. there's no vis as in sound in terms of the coin, but it's all done to music. And it's again, it's like dancing, it's like body language. Mm -hmm. um, so do you incorporate other uh, arts to go with that? Like for me personally, I like to watch a lot of martial arts. I like to watch a lot of the mm -hmm. movements of people because that it, um, inspires me to make my coin magic better, just in terms of movements of the way. What about you? I mean, uh, Mel, I mean, do you have any sort of other art forms that you look up to? Well, music is big thing in my life. Okay. It's all like okay. I play same, the drums. Same and, Lewis, I think, yeah. Yeah, play the drums, play the guitar. I mm -hmm. I write some songs just for fun. And nice. they, yeah, that's I think that's the art side of me. Yeah, yeah. Juggling for me, I mean juggling's another thing. That's why oh, I also. Yeah, juggling. I love juggling. So when I yeah, I know because people think, oh, you know, you're just you're just juggling three objects or whatever. But I I think it's more about if you know how to juggle or just let another art form. For example, if you know something about music or you know something about movements and martial arts and miming, which is another important point. We we'll talk about that later. But I think something so simple like juggling helps you with your hand-to-eye coordination because even though you don't juggle there's a lot of like movements where you're doing something with one hand while your other yeah. hand's doing something very different and it's just training your brain to do those things those body movements uh, any comments about that uh, sort of i guess well, I, I i really think that you right on the juggling part because it's like if we all juggle when you're doing coin magic to think about yeah it. it's muscle memory right yeah it's like you said march words and I mean, any anything that you do, that yeah. you, you need other type of arts to make your coin magic better. Not only coin magic, but anything better. But because yeah. you put something of you. So if you're doing juggling of it, and then it's and if you think of juggling in a in a proper French job, it's literally the same thing because you need that art, the motions, your arm motions, your body movement has to learn. It's the same thing when you pay attention to so much stuff at the same time. So yeah, it's a it, it never gonna diminish anything. Just gonna improve everything. 
Like, mm -hmm. you, I've seen a lot of magicians doing stiff magic. They're like, yeah, <laughs> and it's weird. But like, when you yeah. see like when you it's because they're they're so focused on that little frame, which yeah. is not the area of code man. It is more. It's about being you, right? It's putting you yeah. into it. So nothing that you do with other arts would. Everything that you do, if you paint, you know, a friend of mine loves painting and he does a whole routine with the brush and a coin. Oh, beautiful. Yeah. And it's, a, it's amazing. I was like, yeah. wow, like it's just, it, look, it looks so good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I actually, say, speaking about painting and speaking about talking to other magicians, as I know I said this earlier, but I want to tell you, especially watching on YouTube, because a lot of you sometimes comment in the, in the message, oh, why don't you get that person or that person on your channel talk about these things? Yes, I know there's a lot of people out there specializing in these things. The problem I have sometimes is, well, three things. Either it's a time difference for people in some part of the world, like obviously, Louis, you are in Canada right now, which is, uh, yeah. what time is it? Is it like eight in the morning? Eight no, nine? It's, no, it's about 10. 10. Okay. Okay. So here it's about four o'clock in, in England. And what about uh, Mel? What about where you are? What time uh, is it there? In Finland, in Finland uh, time is uh, 6 p.m. Okay. P.m. Okay. Okay. So it's closer to me, I guess. Uh, but yeah, so that's, that's number one is the time difference. It's really hard to get. Number two is uh, people don't really know me as in they don't know my channel or they don't see my post when I, mean, I put it up saying, uh, you know, I'm going to do talks about these things. And also number three is people, maybe they don't care about coming on my channel because it's not really, you know, they're two big names, I guess, to come to my channel. So that answers your question about that for those who are commenting on YouTube. But speaking about miming, let's go. Um, Mika, do you have anything to say about miming in magic? Do you use miming a lot? Well, <laughs> miming, is a, miming is a big thing in coin magic because most of the time yeah. you, you raise into the air and you pull out something and, and you are yeah. passing it around and you are playing it with nothing. Yeah. That's just yeah. miming what you are doing. So exactly. That's, that's really big part of coin magic. Mm -hmm. uh, it, that was one thing that changed for me when I was, when I read miming once, well, of course, Jeff McBride always talks about it. Yeah. But if guys want to research, there's this guy, Vito Lupo. Vito Lupo. Vito okay. Lupo is a, he works a lot of uh, stage magic, but he has, uh, I'll let you know, he has a couple of things and he talks about mime. He's a fantastic mime for magic. Mm -hmm. And learning, I, when I saw him doing magic, I, I think a lot of people would do his routine, doesn't even know it's his, that's sponge ball in the mouth. Okay. Oh, that's like his. He, he wow. does. Yes, he does okay. a lot of that. And uh, they they have a show the hand empty and the handkerchief pops out with the, an elastic thing. And he does. Right. He is a beautiful mime magician. Okay. Right. And then a lot of when I read his stuff and I was just like, hmm. So I incorporated a lot of that mime because if you if you're doing this, you're miming it. Oh, yeah. Hmm. Like you're miming to put a coin in your hand when you got nothing, yeah. so you have yeah. to learn. You have to learn, yeah. Right, so it's it's a different. You're not, but you still mime it. Yeah. In fact, I watch a lot of, uh, you know, just things like double takes. I know it sounds so simple. I mean, maybe because my routine is structured where at one moment I have a coin in my hand and I have a pen in the other hand and they change places. And sometimes, mm. uh, because my face, I think another thing is uh, when people watch you, uh, this is the frame. I like to keep my, my yeah. magic in this frame, like a, like a box, but then obviously also live. So not just yeah. a box on, on video, but it's also facial expressions. That means when I do a transposition, let's say in magic, and there was a pen here and now it's a coin, I do something which is a double take where I'll look here and then I'll look here really fast again. Uh, these small things showcase to the audience of my face, go, oh, did, like, did you see that? And then without me saying a word, they go, oh yeah, now we get it. Now they've changed. Because sometimes if you perform magic too fast, which I'm going to talk, talk about in the next subject really is, is about the timing, fast and slow. Uh, sometimes yeah. people forget about that. Uh, yeah, uh, big time. Yeah. So, so what, what's your take about the speed now? I think most people have told me, and I think I've learned this over the years, in magic is always slow down. Is that a, an important point with coin magic, would you say? Or mm. speed? Sometimes Mika, you, you want to go first? Fast. <laughs> Make it, yeah, Mel? Well, uh, from my eyes, uh, if the coin magic is done fast, like boom, boom, something's always happening. Like, for example, this 
nowadays popular uh, spellbound routines that have like 25 coins and the coins just changing and changing and changing yeah. and it's changing in a different way. Um, it, it doesn't make any sense to the spectators. Uh, but but like like my spellbound routine that I teach in utility for one, it's there is five changes in there, only five, and every change that is in in there, uh, you can do it as slowly as you want, and you can take your time when you're doing it. So mm -hmm. that I I don't know. Should I say that I hate these fast little? Things. You know, what? I th yeah, I think I think everyone's got their own opinion. That's the whole beauty about this. There's no right or wrong answer because sometimes something that can work for me might not work for you, or something yeah. that can work for Louis might not yeah. work for somebody else watching this on YouTube. So I think, yeah, you could say what you hate is absolutely fine. I mean, I don't really hate fast magic, but I think for me personally, I used to do a lot of magic fast. Or well, it, it, it stop at coin magic, but coin magic fast, and then realized I was only doing it fast because I was scared that I was going to get caught out because obviously you'd be no way apart a lot of things when it comes to coin magic yeah. and yeah. now i've changed that attitude even if i'm palming something and people are looking i think it's more about naturalism trying to be as natural as possible and i don't need to rush when i'm not rushed so but yeah go ahead Mika. tell us why you hate the, the fast magic i don't really hate it it's it's really fun to watch when like someone like ponta the smith stuff it's it's yeah. really great to watch but uh, i i try to think about the magic that I do with coins uh, for the spectator's eyes. Okay, okay. You know, so it's a different thing to show this fast magic to, to other magicians because they know what's going on. Mm -hmm. And they are like, they, their mind blows off when they see that, how can he do something like that? But, but for the uh, real life spectators, they don't know what's going on. The coins just changing, like in in, in these spellbound routines. And the the other thing is is that the I think many times when people start to do coin magic, like you said, they are afraid to get caught. Mm -hmm. So when they do a move, they do it really a lot faster. Yeah, that everything else what they are doing. They can be really slow and smooth, but when they do a move, that's the fast part, and and that yeah. indicates to the spectators that okay, now there's something fishy going on mm -hmm. at that moment. Say, yeah. and, and it it might be that only the fast moment that the spectators see that's the only thing they they are going to remember mm -hmm. afterward when they start to like think in their head like how, how was it done uh, they go like oh there was this one part when he did something really fast that's when it happened they don't yeah. know what happened but they might think that, that right. that's the part which is an i, I totally agree with that point point. <laughs> uh, and lewis is practicing yeah. the whole time uh i guess you practice a lot I have, I have. Uh, so speaking about yeah. practicing how um well how many hours do you practice See, I I depend. It's like, uh, I my dates are super fast. They can work, and I also do martial arts. Right, like I, I do Muay Thai. So it's like, oh wow, I, my hands are get really beat up. But I take right, usually right. like an hour, an hour and a half, and I yeah. I fo I focus practice. So okay, I, and I like to practice different than most people. Like I'll get the the same guy, like the the Vero Looper routine with the SpongeBob. Like if I yeah. see something that's cool, I'm like, what can I make? Because it's not dated back to him. I think that even the routine was back in Tar Bell, but it's the the way that he does it. Yeah, makes you practice differently because, right. like you said about right. the mime, it goes yeah. into mime speed and and practice because he has to look mime take it, in his actions made that routine for him. To make it better right yeah yeah um so when i for example if i'm having to practice i don't do a lot of a uh, you know, it's classic palming and stuff but to me I'll, I'll stay for an hour and study my action of doing it yeah yeah and then study my actions of not doing it 
and like I said, I love the framework. I shoot, yeah. I, yeah. I love, I shoot a guy and I talk a lot about that stuff and yeah. keeping it in here instead of, because I see it, it again depends if you're in a show and if you're having a lot of people around you, mm -hmm. you have to switch your body. But I, yeah, yeah, I try to practice like one thing at all the time, like edge grip is my thing to go. Okay. So I, I'll spend like an hour just kind of edge grip. Wow. Yeah, yeah. Figuring it out where it goes and how do I twist, how do I change it? Yeah. But it, 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 it's just focus, right? It's just like anything yeah. you have to, if you want to achieve that thing, focus yeah. on it for a bit. Excellent. So, and, but not uh, for Mel, too long, but otherwise you yeah. go. <laughs> yeah, and, and Mel, what about you? How many hours do you practice and where do you practice? Uh, oh, it's a hard question. Uh, sometimes I feel that I practice all the time and I okay. don't do <laughs> anything else. Yeah. Uh, but, uh, for me, I don't have any like practice routines that I okay. do, but just when I have the time, yeah, I, I'm probably practicing. I have every time when I watch a movie or some series on TV, yeah. I'm always rolling coins and and doing something yeah. and um, if i have some idea that i want to do or something yeah. that i've seen and I'm, i want to recreate that then i just go it doesn't matter what's the time <laughs> yeah yeah i think i think that's the strength of coin magic right because True, like, yeah. whenever you have a coin, you can actually keep the keep it on your pocket you keep it anywhere and you can practice nobody yeah. actually realizes you're doing but you yeah because you don't like if you want to learn a classic poem, I always tell like the guys that I'm helping with, put a few coins in your pocket and then just walk and classic palm the coins yeah. in your pocket all yeah. day. Exactly. Like, yeah. Just do it. Or so you, you don't like, need yeah. Mika said, yeah, if you're going to a movie or like, watch a movie like uh, Mika said, just put the coins in your hand and just watch it. Like it's not you're not calling attention to it until you need it. He's right. Yeah. yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, that's that's a very good point. I, I'm the same. I, I'll watch a lot of TV series and I just do that. But for me, really, most of my practice, to be honest, I just tell people I don't practice. And they're so surprised. How come I don't practice? Is most of my practice really is done when I perform. Now, me personally, I do a lot of, a lot of residencies. And what these are, these are jobs that don't make a lot of money, but they are regular jobs. Sometimes in the yeah. day, I'll, or like on a Saturday, I'll do like three residencies. I'm performing in the afternoon for a brunch and then an evening and a night job. And, and because I perform so much, I like two hours and then two hours that is my practice i am practicing while i'm performing so that's okay. where i get most of my practice done uh, the sad bit with that is i'm doing the same routines so i don't yeah. i don't uh, i don't have a lot more obviously routines like the two of you uh, my my magic is very limited but i said to myself i want to be the best in the world at doing a particular routine so i just join with that and the more hours you do with that the more better you're going to get the, more, the better you're going to get yeah i have so to think like i have i have a few routines that i, I practice constantly and uh, as like you said once you just know it yeah it's just perform only performing you get the practice because then yeah. you lose the fear of uh, palming uh, you lose the fear of like like you said getting caught you you mm -hmm. learn your own speed you learn everything but yeah, you gotta you gotta do it. Yeah. Like when I when I got Curtis Cam, uh, my which is my it's the only thing that I practiced for like two years was Curtis wow. Cam palms of steel because I yeah. didn't know any better. Right. Uh, right. I was literally bringing up. Uh, I know it, it sounds ridiculous, like to a restaurant that paid me pretty much nothing, but I had yeah. my goblet and I was doing the goblet routine from Curtis Cam on the tables for people. Yeah. Yeah. Because then that was my practice. And they're like, how, oh, how, the, come, how the hell are you so good at it? I'm like, I did it all the time. For, like you said, for peanuts pretty much. Yeah. Because they don't pay that much. Yeah. But that's that important. got me my practice. Yeah. yeah. It's important. As much, I think as much as it's time that we practice in front of the mirror, it's the same amount of time that you need to practice in front of people. Because yeah. sometimes you realize that I'm trying this move in front of the mirror where it's so perfect, but in front of people, it just doesn't work or it's just too much of work for nothing and and i think uh, there's a lot of yeah 
anyways, uh, I, was, I was going on a tangent there. But yeah, I know I'm just feeling unfortunate because there's so many beautiful, beautiful coin guys out there who didn't get a chance to come with this because of time difference and because they didn't know about it. But I'm sure we'll do a lot more chats like this in yeah. the future. But, but I wanted to end by asking you, who is your favorite coin magician? So where could someone watching this maybe start? I guess they're two different questions, but maybe let's start with who's your favorite coin magician and where can someone learn? by watching this well uh, where's the big uh, the first step to learn is it books okay. or dvds or what Mika, you want to go first <laughs> yeah Mika. yeah sure uh, for me my all-time favorite coin magician is kaino harbordal and that's hands oh, I, I know louis loves him uh, yeah as much as i do he's he's like a on the next level He's a great teacher, he's a great performer. Everything he puts has put out is is just pure gold and it's kind of horrible yeah. hands down. Yeah. I yeah, met him at the magic cool. circle. He was lecturing there a while ago. Yeah, that's good. Uh, yeah. Any other suggestions? I've never met him, but that's that's like Oh, um, you've never met him, okay. No, but I, I really would love yeah. to some some I hope that yeah. I will. <laughs> yes. Well so, trust me, you will. <laughs> I know. And yeah, Louis, what a, where to yeah. start learning? Yeah. Me, okay. I again, me, I just like Mika. Like my first DVD was Palms was still two, so okay. I I know Heart Bottle had a huge influence on me, and so did Curly Scam. Yeah. Uh, but I, you know, they're like the, the guys that I look for if you want to learn like edge grip and things that are more sophisticated, like you said, uh, especially on on framework. Yeah. Because if you're gonna learn, uh, there's a lot of easier stuff that you should learn in magic. Like, yeah. <laughs> Michael Amar has a, a beautiful DVD on coin magic that is uh, self working, uh, not self working, but like easy, easier coin magic that you can learn. Mm -hmm. uh, of course, there's Bobo. But if yeah. I had to pick, like, because uh, like, I have too many magicians that, to name, that would be like Shuragawa, the pretty scam. Uh, yeah, shoot, yeah. Mike Gallo is a beautiful coin worker. Right. Um, Bill Cinti, my friend Bill Centino, it's he does amazing coin coin work too. So there's there's a lot of good coin guys out there. Yeah. The thing is about learning coin magic is finding. I would suggest if somebody wanted to learn it, pick like first like Bobo and try Bobo David Roth, and somewhere along with Shudogawa and like kind of hard model. Yeah. Yeah. Because only studying those people you learn which type of coin magic you like to do yeah because there's important. guys like like yeah. we do because we like to stand and do things standing and flat and like more like I said like more flashy and visual and things yeah. like that there's guys that like the more classic the ross bertrams the david ross they're not super visual but they're on a the table yeah. and just as strong yeah. and you know in so there's so many different styles over there. Yeah, that that's a good point. Because that, yeah, that's exactly how I started. I do, I would say I started with Michael Amar and David Roth and that sort of thing years ago. I say years ago, about 10 years ago. Yeah. And then later I moved on to my own thing and I stopped watching a lot of people. In fact, once you know the basics, then it's all about for me, I want to create yeah. my own style. Yeah. Uh, so then I stopped yeah. watching. But obviously people like yourselves, in fact, uh, Mika, I'm go I'm, after this, I'm going to be following your Instagram straight away. In fact, we met today for the first time. Uh, but like oh. you, I've seen some of your stuff, which is amazing. Another one uh, who I love, absolutely love, is Danny Goldsmith, who unfortunately couldn't be on this video. He was going to be on this video earlier, but I think he had some stuff to do. And this, uh, you know, Jeffrey Wang is another person who was supposed to be. It's a lot of people that were supposed to be on the channel, but due to some circumstances with time difference and that sort of thing, they couldn't make it. Uh, but I'm sure we can have another chat later with them at some, some point. Uh, but I think I think this was a, a wonderful chat. So uh, I don't want to keep it way too long because I know these things can go on forever. We could talk yeah. about that count magic for a long time so i think okay. uh, let's uh, let's end there if, if there's anything you want to plug and tell yeah. them that you're coming out with i know mika you were saying that you have your utility one where could they find it is it penguin magic they can look it up to penguin magic. yeah okay and uh, louis what about you you have any dvds or anything that people can learn from yeah i have some stuff i have my on my website i have in penguin magic a few downloads but i i'm putting it on my website too uh okay. louiscastromagic.com and like okay. i have lecture notes and i have a couple other things Perfect. Uh, just the one, if I had to add one little final thing, I'll, I'll, the only thing that I would add, triple, like you said, like, if you get some DVDs, get some books and read. 
Okay. Yeah. Hey, thank you. There was one thing that I that I I noticed that a lot of the the young coin guys they're coming up. They see YouTube is great. Uh, it should, it gives you so much, but it's just like in martial arts. You need to yeah. learn your jab, your kick, everything before you fight. Yeah. So yeah. Get learn as much as you possibly can until you find your own style. Because like, you know, Joff Lada is one of one of my favorite like top coin guys. And mm -hmm. I've seen a lot of guys talking about the uh, Noah Palm and they say oh, this is not right. And I'm like it's like yeah. learn the contest. Once you learn your own body language, and like mm. you can download my my stuff, or you can look at Mika's stuff. You can they can look at your stuff. You have a beautiful DVD out there too. Yeah, that's really cool. <laughs> you don't want to watch that. Oh, man. <laughs> Whatever that ball Check thing is super cool. Uh, <laughs> you know, and I actually, I have no idea how many times I hit my toe trying to do that thing. Oh yeah, no. <laughs> we'll make another. Maybe you can join in the chat when I do the crystal ball magic. There's a lot sure. of contact jugglers out there, like Miles and stuff, who watch my channel. I guess uh, we'll try and do that. So the whole idea with this, I'm trying to do different conversations. So once, uh, maybe two, three times a week, if I have some time, I'm going to go into Zoom like this and chat with just people. You don't, you don't. People don't have to yeah. like people watching this at home right now on YouTube. You don't need to be the best in the world at at or be very famous because some people. Message me, oh, I don't want to come on your channel because I think your followers might not want to listen to me or I'm no one. I've been doing magic for two years. It doesn't yeah. matter. This whole point is just about, about making friends. So if you're watching yeah. this again on YouTube and if you are into maybe ring magic, which I'm going to be doing soon, come on the chat. Maybe you have some advice that could help somebody out there. It doesn't really matter. So that's that's the end closing. But uh, yeah, I do want to thank you once again. Thanks both of you for coming on this and doing this with me. Uh, let's keep in touch. I'll definitely follow. Uh, I, 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 like I said, yeah, I follow both of you on Instagram. I uh, just double check again. But uh, uh, if not, uh, yeah, I'll see you very soon. Take care, everyone. Thanks for watching this. I'm going to end recording right here. Bye, everyone on YouTube. And we'll uh, okay.